If you have been watching my YouTube videos over the past couple of weeks, you may have noticed that I've been using this monitor to do some HDR analysis on a handful of 4K Blu-ray titles. This is the Canon DPV3120 4K HDR reference monitor, capable of 2000 nits full screen. Let's see what it can do. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu and I'm an HDR evangelist. I believe almost everything looks better in HDR when graded properly. When it comes to color grading HDR titles, we are talking commercial feature films, not YouTube videos like this one. Professional colorists have a few choices. They can go with the Sony BVM-X300, an RGB OLED mastering monitor which, for the longest time, has been the benchmark among the creative community at least until Sony themselves decided to retire the self-emissive technology to be replaced by the BVM-HX310, a dual-layer LCD which is immune to burn-in and can go brighter full-screen than OLED. There are other dual LCD monitors on the market too, such as the Flanders Scientific XM311K, the ASO CG3145 or 3146, all between 15 to 40,000 pounds. So when I found out that Canon is selling a reference monitor, this monitor right here, in the same price bracket, which is not OLED, which is not dual layer LCD, I was intrigued. The Canon DPV3120 uses a 31 inch single layer LCD screen with a true 4K resolution of 4096 x 2160 and full array local dimming directly LED backlighting. Its unique selling features are a full field peak brightness of 2000 nits as well as an inbuilt HDR analysis toolkit that lets you not only check the waveform, vector scope, max CLL, max FALL, and pixel value of the content on screen, but also apply false color and do split screen comparisons. It retails at $32,000 in the States, one of the rare times when the display I'm measuring is more expensive than the equipment I'm using to carry out the measurements. The design won't win any beauty awards, but the target clientele won't care, because all other reference monitors in this price class look like this anyway, with thick bezels and an even thicker body to house the internal electronics and cooling fans. Talking of which, the Canon DPV3120 emitted a whirring fan noise upon power up, but it's quieter than that generated by competing reference broadcast monitors of the same size probably because the single-layer LCD requires less cooling than dual-layer LCDs. The front screen carries a matte finish, which rejects ambient light better than the semi-glossy finish found on some other reference monitors, at the expense of punchier-looking blacks. The connections are found on the left rear of the display, including 8 12 gigabits per second SDI terminals, 4 in and 4 out as well as an HDMI input with HDCP 2.2 compliance. As is the case with most professional monitors, the Canon 3120 doesn't ship with a remote control. All the controls can be done using physical buttons and a knob in front of the monitor, or via the web interface which we very much prefer. The Canon DPV3120 uses an IPS LCD panel which typically delivers shallower blacks, but wider viewing angles than VA type LCDs. With local dimming disabled and peak white set to 100 candelas per square meter, we measured black level to be 0.09 candelas per square meter on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, deepening to 0.059 candelas per square meter once local dimming auto was engaged. Using our own custom auto test pattern containing a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, we counted 26 vertical columns and 14 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 364 independently dimmable zones. While even some prosumer monitors, such as the Apple Pro Display XDR and the Asus ProArt PA32 UCX, have a higher number of zones, we need to emphasize that local dimming algorithm plays an equally important role in the final picture quality and the Canon DPV3120 was equipped with one of the most effective local dimming algorithms we've tested, particularly for grading purposes. For HDR content, local dimming auto produced the deepest blacks 
compared with all other backlight control options. In extremely demanding scenes, such as the Starfield pattern from the Spears and Mansell UHD HDR benchmark disc, some blotchiness was unavoidable as the local dimming zones switched on and off. But these artifacts were significantly less than what we witnessed on consumer displays, such as the Apple Pro Display XDR and the Samsung QLED TVs. Blooming was suppressed adequately, although since the priority was picture accuracy, both in terms of shadow detail and highlight luminance, inevitably there would be blooming seeping into the letterbox bars or around really bright objects against a dark background. Note that for some reason, we saw significantly less blooming in this campfire scene from the Revenant than what's captured on camera. Canon's local dimming algorithm was also slower to react than what we normally observe on consumer FALD LCD TVs, resulting in visible afterglow. But for professional colorists who frequently pause on a frame to color grade the footage, this is probably a non-issue. Color accuracy was excellent out of the box, with an average grayscale error of less than 1 in the BT709 picture preset for SDR content. After calibrating our review unit using the onboard 2-point white balance controls, average delta errors dropped even further, though there remained some minor blue tint near black. To correct this, there's the option of uploading a 3D LUT to the monitor, for example by using the Kalman calibration software. But we didn't have time to pursue this. We were reasonably happy with an average delta error of 0.63 on this challenging color checker SG chart anyway, and when we scanned through some of our reference scenes, they looked spot on. We doubt the target clientele for this monitor will be grading much standard definition content, but the Canon DPV3120 offers three scaling methods for your needs. Nearest neighbor was the cleanest but also the most basic. Shape trace was more aggressive, resulting in a sharper image but also more ringing and fizziness, while bicubic was a good middle ground, exhibiting no moiré on this LumaZoom plate pattern. The monitor passed full chroma bandwidth from this Spears & Mansell HD benchmark disc. Screen uniformity was superb, with no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting at all in real-life actual viewing, even if you may see some non-uniformity in this video. That's because we were filming in HDR which exaggerated a number of issues which were not visible by eye. The Canon DPV3120 hung onto its color fidelity better off-axis than dual-layer LCDs, but since any blooming artifacts would glow brighter when viewed from an angle, you should try and watch the monitor straight on all the time. For HDR, peak brightness on a 10% window measured close to the spec 2000 nits at D65 white point with an impressively accurate tracking for both HDR10PQ and Hybrilog Gamma EOTF out of the box. Because the Canon was able to sustain almost 2000 nits of full field peak brightness too, bright HDR scenes just popped off the screen, outperforming any other displays we've tested to date. In the final act of Wonder Woman where the roaring fire and explosions frequently go above 1500 nits, we could literally feel the heat when watching the monitor, and not because of Gal Gadot either. Because IPS panels suffer from brighter blacks inherently, shadow detail appeared more compressed near black, while at the other end of the contrast ratio spectrum, the DPV3120 had clipped at around 2000 nits, which is the correct behavior for a mastering monitor. The white color gamut capability is provided by PFS Phosphor, judging from the spectral power distribution captured using our Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer allowing the Canon DPV3120 to reach 97% of DCI-P3 and 77% of REC2020, both in UV terms. Last but not least, let's talk about the integrated HDR toolkit, arguably the biggest selling point of the Canon 3120. You can analyze the maximum luminance and the frame average luminance, then export them from a monitoring session. You can also check the brightness and color of a pixel using a cursor, apply false colors, and do HDR versus SDR split screen comparisons. Due to the short loan period for this review, I didn't have time to explore all these HDR monitoring functions in great detail, but rest assured that they are more comprehensive than those implemented on any other reference monitors on the market. To sum up, 
The Canon DPV3120 is an interesting addition to the small list of HDR reference monitors that fulfill the requirements for Dolby Vision certified post-production facilities. For color grading dark scenes, we still prefer the greater near-black precision of the Sony X300 OLED and other dual-layer LCD monitors. But the fact is that the Sony X300 has been discontinued, and dual-layer LCD is not without its own issues such as shadow images and limited viewing angles. What may attract some colorists to the Canon 3120 is its unrestricted canvas of up to 2000 nits full screen for HDR grading, as well as slightly quieter operation compared with its peers. The DPV3120's matte screen and comprehensive HDR analysis tools also make the display ideal for on-set monitoring. If you would like to find out more about other monitors you can use to perform HDR grading, please click here for a complete list of our technical reviews, and I will see you in the next video.